The Z to Z Podcast. Good morning, good evening, or good day, and welcome to the Z to Z Podcast, the home for Xbox achievement hunters and gamer score junkies. I'm your host, Brandon Freeman. Thank you so much for listening. At Z to Z, we love gaming in particular, grabbing achievements and gaining gamer score. We do news, reviews, and interviews. It's about achievements. We'll unlock it. You can find show notes for this show as well as previous shows on our website, Z to Z.com. This is episode 135. Although, Prue, you accidentally left it as 132. So, yeah. What ha- so that was awkward, right? Uh, yeah. And that was brought up to me like two days ago. Well, I think what happened was I had removed the previous episode's edit, but not the previous previous episode's edit oh, okay. from my computer. So I just was like, oh. 131 yeah. and kept going. Okay. Yeah. So sorry gotcha. about that. Well, that was a little mix up, but. C135. You can also contact us with questions and comments on Twitter at Z to Z Z E D T O Z E D or at our forums, forum.zedz.com, or email us directly, contact at zedz.com. Well, you heard him. It is he, it is Prue, it is the man. How you doing, Prue? I'm doing all right. You know, been uh, been gaming quite a bit, so there's there's yeah. a lot to talk about. Uh, how how what about you? Pretty good. Pretty good. It's been it's it's a slowed down a little bit at work, which is nice. I get to breathe a little bit. But uh, you know, I was talking to Mighty Mango. He he, you know, they're like, I haven't seen Mango in a while. What's he up to? And I know you get to talk to him more frequently than I do. Uh, but he was like, Yeah, they moved my desk, so now this is Mango talking. Like I am like the customers can see what I'm doing. They're like right behind me oh, no. all the time. And so like he can't and I said, dude, I totally get it because I got moved to the cube like right in front of my boss, her office. And so it's like and there's no like there's no way to angle the monitors so you can't <laughs> like just see. Right. So it's like, ugh. So I'm like dodging meetings and call. Like if I hear her on her phone. Then I'm like, oh, I can go, you know, check some things out real quick while she, you know, because she can't see me from her desk. But if she like rustles or gets up to go to the bathroom or, you know, goes to the lunchroom or whatever, it's like, quick, quick, quick switch. (laughs) (laughs) I know that life. Alt tab, alt tab, alt tab. I I know that life because my my boss is right across the way from me. Like his office is right in front of where I sit. And he spends probably, I'd say, 70 percent of his time in conference calls and he shuts his door when he does it. Right. So fortunately, I have a very a wide berth of time for when he opens sure. his door to when I when I can alt tab. So it's uh, <laughs> it's not a problem for me. But yeah, I know that life. Yep, it has dramatically affected my uh, my Discord time, which is unfortunate. If you, our listeners, want to go to Discord, there's still plenty of action over there. You can head over there, discord.io slash Z to Z. That's all one word, like the Twitter handle. Um, so yeah, it's it's still hopping and, and fun to be over there. Uh, and I, I lurk, but I, I typically can't chit-chat quite as much as I used to. Um, anyway, we should talk about what's going on, because it is the start of a brand new month. And so if you haven't been over to our forums, um, you should head over there, because we've got new contests up and going. And by the time this comes out, you still have a brief window, because uh, I'll be out of town. So I think by the time this comes out, you have a brief window to get your submissions in for July if you uh, you know if you you played any soccer games or games that have soccer in them, I looked at my my completion history and I only did oh well, I did I finished Rocket League so that counts, and uh, the two Rayman Legends games because they have the the Kung Fu Kick thing in there uh, that there's an achievement related hmm, for that okay. so those count uh, but I have those three completions I, I don't play soccer games so no Fifas no PES none of that stuff uh, do you have any any soccer games that you Oh, I think I have two FIFAs on my tag, like FIFA yeah. 12 and FIFA 9, maybe. It's just like random because I have uh, like a lot of my friends play FIFA games. Um, sure. Primate's a big uh, fan of FIFA and a lot of other, other other friends are and they play them all the time. So occasionally they'll rope me into getting it and I'll just play with them. I don't I, don't, I mean, those are just massive games that I have like three achievements in and I never, ever go back to. But yeah, no, I, I don't even know what I would use for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there you go. Uh, there's that. And then the other one was, of course, uh, the Gamertag Challenge for what the fuck, or uh, Elroy OMJ and Mark B. So you have those two uh, two things there. Uh, but it is the new month, so August is upon us, and we have um, what the fuck is the August Gamer Tag? Uh, all consonants, uh, W-H-T-T-H-F-G-G. And then, uh, and then our our community challenge is Metroidvania games. 
um, because Kush, uh, Kush Moose and I are immensely excited for the game coming out next week, Dead Cells. Uh, we both pre-ordered it. We're, we're hot to trot. And, uh, and so we were going to make it kind of a Dead Cells month, but we opened it up to more Metroidvanias. Um, Chin Doctor, I think, even asked uh, you know, from the community that he would like a roguelite version of you know, the, the community challenge. We'll, we can probably do that sometime down the road. We'll see if there's another good roguelite that comes out. Um, but anyway, so yeah, Metroidvanias, which uh, leads into what I've been playing because I mentioned it last well, week. Hang on, Freem. Hang on. Oh, Real quick. I just wanted to mention I, I, the special rules for the Gamertag Challenge this month um, in honor of, uh, of you know, what the fuck. The yeah. older the game is, the more of a bonus you're going to have. Uh, oh, really? You'll get bonus points b- because because he's old. That's, he's super old. That's the joke. I just I just I wanted it. to say that. Sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Met- Metroid so only is only backwards compatible. Exactly. Exactly. If you could yeah. play a 360 launch title <laughs> that has one of the, you get uh, ten bonus points. I'm making that up, but you know it's still funny. So it. <laughs> so of Metroidvanias, I had mentioned it last week. Uh, Owlboy. I've been playing Owlboy. Got on oh, the, yeah. the, the the tiny little sale that was there, and that is a Metroidvania. Um, it's not as sprawling. There's not as many upgrades that you would see in kind of like your traditional Metroidvania. Um, but there certainly is the large open map that uh, is blocked off by by areas you can't get to at, at specific times. And so uh, it's it's a relatively short game. It's looking it's going to be like that eight to ten hour range. Um, and, and what I really like about it, um, like I said, I'm almost done with it. I'm, I'm kind of at that point where they're like, Hey, uh, you should kind of do what you're going to do in the world. Cause you won't be back for a while type, you know, marks. Now I know for a fact that you do come back because there is, um, you know, I only have like, I think eight achievements left, six achievements left. One of them was one I missed at the beginning. So I have to go back and redo that one. Um, but uh, six achievements left. And so I was like, oh, okay, I better make sure I have all my collectibles and everything. And I was like, okay, where's this third collectible? And I was looking at it, and I was like, oh, I don't recognize that place. Oh, that's why, because that's where I'm going next. Uh, So I'm going to stop the video, because I don't want to spoil anything, and just know, oh, I have to go there, get something, and bring it back. Fine. But uh, everything else I went and did, uh, like collecting all these coins and things around the world, and... um. You know, I I used a guy just briefly uh, to kind of clean up some of those coins because you know, you can go through and get most of them. They're not terribly difficult to find. Um, it's just because because the world actually isn't that big. Uh, you know, when you think of like traditional Metroidvanias, you have a pretty sprawling. You know, I think of like Ori and the uh, and the Blind Forest, or or even to some extent like the you know the the terrible. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Danger of the Ooze even had a relatively <laughs> big, you know, or even the old Metroid, right? So, like, it, it tends to kind of go on for a little bit. But this really has, like, you know, it has multiple rooms, um, you know, where you, you, you reach the edge of the, 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 the room you're in and it transitions to another uh, small little area where maybe there's a puzzle or something like that. There are, there are some of those sprawling, like, dungeons and things. But typically, when you're done with a dungeon, there isn't much to go back there for. Um, so they're kind of like these dead legs that you go into, and and they do a nice job of as you're going through a dungeon and progressing, they loop back around to something that oh, this was blocked before, and now I got the ability, and I loop back around, and boom, there it is. Uh, the one thing that it, it it's has been frustrating me is that there's no fast travel. Uh, so like yeah. You can't. There's there's one spot where you can go back and forth between, but even there there was a, a point where I had I went and I visited this area that I had to like travel way out for, and I and I went and visited there, and it was like just this brief little cut scene, and and then I was like, okay, this is a huge open area. There's no coins here. There's just this one dude, and I have been all over, and I can't find anything of interest. So I went over to Google, and I'm like, when I return here, is there anything, like, I should do? And I couldn't find anything. There was nothing. You know, I was trying to, you know, stay away from spoilers and stuff, but I knew that area was, that was it. And that area is, like, just a big, open, dead end. I was like, man, now I'm super far away from where I want to go, 
and I can't quickly get there, which those kind of things, they, they suck. You know, it's nice where you get those like portals or save points or whatever that you can kind of go to these little hub spaces. That doesn't exist. But again, the world isn't huge. So that's probably my, my one gripe with it. As far as the gameplay, it's, it's been so solid. It's really fun. It's There's a lot of flying. Again, he's, he's an owl, so you get a lot of mo- mobility, motion out of the thing. And swapping between your, your these characters you're carrying with their different abilities is, uh, is pretty easy and quick. And so, like, you can kind of, you know, you can do some kind of cool tricks while you're uh, fighting enemies and stuff. And it is very forgiving from the standpoint of, like, Enemies can just wail on you quite a bit, and you don't take a ton. You don't take much damage at all, um, and so like it's just kind of these nuisance enemies. The biggest issue you'll have is when you run into things that are instant kills, like lava uh, or getting crushed or something. Those things, yeah. You know, but even that, the checkpointing is very forgiving, and so you don't actually end up losing that much progress. And so it's it's a really it's a good entry level game into Metroidvanias if you're if you're interested in dipping your toe in. What I will say from a completion standpoint, though, holy cats, it gets it gets a little weird. There's some cool mechanics that they introduce at a couple points in the game where you're doing something that is is outside of your normal gameplay mechanics. Um, and so I don't want to spoil it because it is a boss mechanic that is that is interesting. And then and then there's this thing at the end. Uh, for for completing and it's called the uh, the a Bedouin cannon challenge or Bogan Boguin. Um, You're just making those say, words up. I'm gonna say Boguin. Well, because it's a uh, it, it's it's a penguin, but I don't know what the bow is. It's like a weird. It's a weird penguin. Um, <laughs> okay. There's three right. of them, and you have to find them in the world. And, sa- and when you save them. They're like, oh, thanks. You know, I'm so glad you saved us from where, you know, whatever. And they're they're kind of they're kind of silly and goofy, and they they open this this cannon thing. Okay, so okay, this cannon now is um, it it launches you. You you can't actually fly, and uh, and so like it shoots you straight up in the air, and then you pl- start plummeting to your death, and you can kind of like course correct and you have to go through this super convoluted course in order to get these these rings these coins and and finish and if you finish that that's part of like that's it's like three achievements worth of stuff there by finishing that nothing has prepared me for how difficult that part was like the gameplay went from like super welcoming and pretty easy to do to punishingly difficult and like <laughs> constantly resetting it was it was crazy and i ended up taking a look at it so in this i just did it last night i, I went 85 times on, Ooh, wow. on, try, on trying to get that and unfortunately kush moose who's who's got 100 percent on the game 84 times oh he got me by oh, one man retry and uh and then i think the only other person on there was like 100 and something uh, but yeah, it was like, man, so close. So um, I'm from your story frame. I'm developing a theory here. Let's hear it. And tell me how accurate I am. Uh, it's a good introduction to the genre. Um, mm-hmm. It's it's pretty easy for the most part, except for maybe one part that will drive you to madness and frustration. And um, eight to ten hours. So is... Owl Boy to Metroidvanias as Bard's Gold is to Rogue Lights. I like that analogy. I am told I am on board with that. Okay. I am I'm definitely on board with that. That does that's very very much like that where yes, Bard's Gold was pretty straightforward and easy, yet it had a couple of things like you had to get over the hump and once you got that, it was just fine. Um so yes, I'm 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 Totally on board with that analogy. Okay. And I told and and as far as Alboy is, I love it. It's I super recommend it. It is so much fun. I'm very curious how the story plays out, what the end here is gonna be. Uh, you know, there's an antagonist, there's a wild card, and like I don't know how that's gonna play out. So I'm excited to to see this kind of finale here. Um and uh, and we'll just see. We'll see how it ends. I was gonna use this 
for Freemhole's completion challenge because it's owl, right? That's an animal. But I I revisited because I decided okay, I had twenty five achieve uh, twenty five um, completions so far this year. I was like, okay, well, how am I doing on like the overall thing though? Like you know, because I've I've been kind of tracking against the 30 categories i don't know if are you, are you doing that at all do you have you paid attention do you care no i that's not anything that i've not, paid attention to no. not your thing um and so like i've been looking at it and i kind of started slotting things in i'm like okay you know for example i had uh you know some games can be like oh okay that has a year in it and that also has this in it and it's a sports title or it's this or whatever you know they could fit in multiple categories. And so I, I kind of parsed it down and I said, okay, how does this actually play out? And there were three games on there that's like, oh, these don't have a home. I like, I kind of used up the better options for what they are. And then I realized, oh, what remains of Edith Finch? Well, a finch is a bird. So boom, uh, that's going to be my animal. And I was able to kind of shift things around to get Air Guitar Warrior in there. Anyway, so I've got I've got five openings left, six openings left, and I need I need a game with an ampersand, which is going to be Skylar and Plux. I need a game with a one point achievement, which is Dark Arcana. I need a game with the as the first word, Vanishing of Ethan Carter. I'm gonna I'm gonna finish Sonic the Fighters for my backwards compatible game, and then that leaves me with. Um, a, the family bond, the sister, brother, mother, father, dad, mom, whatever. I think I'm going to do dad beat dads. That seems like the shortest completion I got here. And then the stupid Star Wars one. I don't know why I put that on there. That is going to blow. It's not, I, it's not that bad, man. I really don't want to play Star Wars Force Unleashed. Uh, I still, I'm, I'm telling you, I still think you're going to breeze through a Lego Star Wars game. Well, depending on which Lego Star Wars game you pick, but... Um, I feel like I always hit the wall on those so oh, hard. It's, it's yeah, like, it's not going to be. Just, it, it just hurts. Yeah, it's going to happen. But You know, I wonder, maybe I could do that and like just finish Westworld. <laughs> like, we don't necessarily have to pay that much oh, attention. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, so that was kind of fun. Anyway, so yeah, Owlboy, highly recommend it. And it fits in this month, uh, and hopefully I can get the completion the only things I'm missing are uh, just kind of two two easy things. One, I have to go back and redo, beat the game, and then there's a complete all achievements achievement. So, you know, that should just fall right into place, cross his fingers. Uh, what about you, Prue? What have you been up to? Up to a lot, actually. Oh, yeah? All right, let's hear it. Um, I'm going to start with a game called Western Press. Have you heard of this? I saw it. Uh, Maca was saying, "Hey, it's uh, it's you got to get on it quick because it's an easy thousand, um, or it's a short one thousand, not necessarily easy." So it's uh, it was on sale. I think it was. I'm pretty sure it was the it's like a um, couple bucks, right, or three bucks. Yeah, the ultimate like sale that. was on sale for two dollars. Man, I love this game. Um, oh yeah, it's super simple. It's, there's nothing to it really. It's actually just a, uh, what would you even call it? Uh, like a Simon Says? So what happens is you're, it's, you're dueling in the Wild West. Okay. And your character and your opponent are on the screen and there's a countdown. And then, boom, um, there's button prompts. It's basically a quick time event game. That's all it is. Okay. There's button prompts all the way down both sides of the screen. You have to just press the button prompts faster than your opponent. That's it. That's the whole game. And is it like it's an AI opponent though? Right? It's an a- well, you, there, uh, y- yes, the, for the for the main like for most of the achievements, absolutely. It's just okay. you're playing against AI, but you can play online or or locally with friends. So, but the game has so much like charm and flavor, and just it just kind of oozes this sort of I don't know. The narrator's great. It's and I was talking to Mango uh, about this because he's he was playing it at the time too. And like a lot of the references, I don't get. They go right over my head. They're old Western, like classic Western references. Oh sure, like those spaghetti Western movies. Exactly. The old, exactly. Yeah. A lot of the achievement names, 
and the characters and stuff like that. I, I, I recognize them from that era, from that, from the stereotypes, but I didn't know them yep. specifically. Sure. But again, for a game, okay, so the first, we'll say, 45 minutes, you're going to get 90% of your achievements. Okay. Uh, and then you, there's like two or three that you kind of have to grind out. They're not bad. They'll, they're only going to be an extra hour, hour or so. But that first hour, that the, the one little bit that you're actually playing the meat of the game, was mm-hmm. fun. And it doesn't overstay its welcome. And you just... So you play nine... In the main story mode, you play nine AI opponents in increasing difficulty. So basically what that means is that they just hit their sequence of button presses faster and faster and faster. Yeah. Now, with... Any any reasonable gamer, I would say you're probably okay up to six or seven. Um, okay. You could probably even get to eight without any big problem. Uh, eight and nine are kind of troublesome. Well, nine certainly, but eight is, is troublesome as well. There's a trick now where you can, as soon as you see the buttons, you can press start. Oh, yeah. And so you'll see all the buttons. You just take a picture of that, and then you follow that instead of the, instead of the prompts on the screen. It gives you like a kind of a... gives you like some time to memorize the sequence before you actually have to press it, which definitely gives you an advantage. Honestly, if you had to get level nine without any advantage, like just go and here's the buttons and go. It's like 2.4, 2.4 seconds or something like that. And there's like nine or 10 inputs. It would be really difficult. I I, I bet. I don't know. I, so, I don't know. That that makes more sense than what kind of what Mac is saying is like they could be challenging, but because there is a a a loophole, it's it's a pretty easy completion. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely yeah. So it's two hundred point achievement. It's uh, worth two sixty nine TA. But it's it. I mean, I, honestly, I don't know if I would have had the patience to do it if I if I didn't know that trick. But um, so that's it. You you basically you start the game. You play levels zero through nine. The first seven are a joke, and then you have two kind of troubling ones, and then you do a few other things, and then you have the the grind for an hour. Okay. And it's it, for two dollars, and I know that's not its normal its normal sale price is eight dollars. This is a dollar more than all of those terrible terrible ACA ACAs. games, <laughs> and it is thousand times better it is so much more fun and much more polished and full of character and silliness and i just i it kind of reminded me of games like games from the behemoth um where it just feels like it's just just oozes personality yeah and it so i just i actually really enjoyed it i played it for two hours i got the the one annoying part was the last achievement i got was for playing an online match, and there is no one playing online. So, oh yeah, I bet. Um, I actually got it with Mango, and but it's a zero point achievement, and that's so annoying when you have to go for. Like I'd already had the the thousand points in the game, but I still had to go out of my way to do something else. You know, it's yeah. like give me ten points or something for it at least. But yeah, it is what it is. So yeah, so that was Western Press. Uh, it was two dollars, and I mean a steal for two dollars. Sure. It's eight dollars now. I'd say it's still worth it if you're looking for easy points. But I I really enjoyed it for a very limited time. It's not a game you could make into a twenty hour experience because you're literally just it's just a quick time event. But right, they 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 found a way to take a quick time event and make a good game out of it. So hats off to them. Yeah, <laughs> nice, nice. What else have you been up to? Uh, yeah. So you know I have. In my possession, I just recently purchased this. I don't know if you're aware, Free, maybe you are, maybe you're not. Uh, on the 360, there was a peripheral that came out called the UDraw tablet. I am familiar with that. Yeah. Now, not intimately. I've never I've never held one or owned one or seen one, but uh, I'm familiar with that. Uh, isn't, didn't that effectively destroy a, uh, a, pub- or a developer? <laughs> Uh, I I don't know exactly what happened. I know it was a failure because they only came out with three games for it. I'm not exactly sure of the history of what was going on there, but whoa, who is the publisher? I want what you draw. You would think it would be Ubisoft, but it might no, not. I be. would I would think so too. THQ. Oh, it, it very right. well could have. It very well could have been problematic for them. Anyways, it's a 
a little it's a tablet uh with a touch pad mm -hmm. um in between the controls of a controller so you have your d-pad on your left and your face buttons on your right and the so like a wii u no because it's not a touch screen it's just a touch pad oh speaking of touch screens so my son was uh, was looking at a game on my laptop and like he was trying to use the trackpad and he was having a super hard time so he just kept touching my screen i'm like <laughs> buddy i don't have a touch screen yeah. like that's not gonna work and he's just looking at it like what the hell's wrong with this this screen <laughs> like anyway sorry no that's funny that's funny um yeah, so it's actually just the touchpad, and it comes with a stylus. And the, there's three games that were released for it, and I've made my way through one and a half of them. I'm 50% through. Um, the three games are Marvel Super Squad, I think that's what it's called. Okay. You Draw Instant Artist and Pictionary. Uh, I haven't played Pictionary yet, but I have it. In fact, I accidentally ordered three copies of that game instead of one. Oh, dear. But okay whatever uh i played a beat you uh marvel which was like a silly kitty type run through the game and beat up the bad guys type game yep uh instant artist which is kind of like mario paint sure um which is reaching a bit and then pictionary which is pictionary but i haven't played pictionary yet but i played the other now, two are, is that are those the only ones with 360 achievements what do you mean are there more because I'm looking at the list here, the Penguins of Madagascar, Doctor Blowhole returns again. Uh, was that not released to Xbox? As far as I know, those are the only three. I did a little bit of research, but are you telling me there's Doctor Blowhole's Revenge? So that it says it's an adventure game, and it it was on 360. What's it called? The Penguins of Madagascar, Doctor Blowhole returns again. And then there's SpongeBob Squiggle Pants. Uh, yeah, are you sure these are on 360? Where are you looking at this? That one, I don't think SpongeBob Squiggle Pants is. I'm looking at the uh, the wiki for. There's a, um, only one Penguins game, and that's a Connect game. So no, I'm pretty sure. Somebody get on get on Wikipedia and make fix this because. <laughs> well, I'm looking on TA. I'm looking at yeah. Penguins games on TA, and there's Penguins of Madagascar, and that's it. And the other the other three games do say very clearly on TA you need a U draw tablet to play this game. So right, um, yeah. This says Doctor Doctor Blowhole turns again is an adventure video game developed by Gryptonite Games and published by THQ. Available for the Wii, Xbox three hundred and sixty, PlayStation three, and Nintendo DS. It was released hmm. on September thirteenth, two thousand eleven. Well, I guess I might have to play that one too. If oh, the three hundred and sixty version requires Connect. Oh yeah, see there you go. Yep. There you go. That's why. So anyways, I've been, uh, I got a, a copy of the tablet and I've been working through these three games. Not much to say other than, okay, uh, I can see why it failed. It's not very compelling, not very interesting. Yeah. Eh. Uh, it's, it's, it's interesting in like a sort of Tony Hawk ride sort of failed peripheral kind of way. You know, where it's like something that's totally forgotten about. Right through time right yeah just a complete waste of your time yeah. just, but you got achievements for it so hey that's not so bad yeah 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 right awesome um i so that that game that i had mentioned that my son was trying to play was uh fallout shelter oh boy and and uh and i am i'm on the home stretch here you completed it so no not yet oh. but i in talking with some i had some sage advice from wakapeel and he suggested, like, because I, what I was doing is just riding out the storm for lunchboxes. And I was like, you know, I had a full, a full, you know, 199 dwellers because I was, you know, I need that one space open for any legendaries I end up getting. Even though you can evict people, they'll just stand outside your, your vault until you let them in. You know, so I, I had a full, I built everything up. You know, I was producing like you wouldn't believe it was wild, and so you typically you just get death claws coming in, raiding, but every now and again you'd get a raider attack, and it's like, okay, well, I'll just play this out until, you know, I get more raiders, because you need 50, and so, you know, I get one every now and again, but I'm still doing quests, I still need lunch boxes, so it doesn't matter. And Waka said, hey, listen, you know, you can actually force the issue on raider attacks by 
dropping your vault down. And I was like, well, what you like, you mean like, like bring my population, like kick 150 people out of my vault? He's like, yes. I'm like, all right, they gone. And so I went on a mass expulsion spree and I booted 150 people out of my vault. Uh, well, not quite, 143. I'm at 57 people right now because I have a couple of uh, of workshops open. They're still fixing something. So I, I might end up booting those people when they're done working. But I cut all my buildings way down, shut this thing down. I sold off all my crafting stuff. I got rid of everything, purged all this stuff. And it's like, all right, I'm finishing this game in the near future. So I did the things I was just kind of sitting on, right? Like customize 10 dwellers. Okay, that's easy. I had everything built. I have all the money in the world. I have almost like a million dollars in this thing. So I uh, caps threw my, frame caps. I'm sorry. Caps. Yes, I had a million caps. Uh, literally a million too. I like that's not even a, a, a hyperbole. Um, and so I was like, just rip through those ten. Uh, I had like twenty some babies. I was like, I'll just make three more babies. I'll be set. I had those twenty five. So I, I knocked those two achievements off my list, and I'm down to three. Successful room rushes, which I just did. You need 50. I just did a bunch more while we're just sitting here. I'm up to 45. Uh, Then that'll take no time at all. The raider attacks. Now that I'm down below 60, I hear 60 is the threshold. If you're below 60, no deathclaw attacks. So you still get rad scorpions and rad roaches and ghouls and stuff. But the, the, the frequency with which you get raiders is better. Much, much better. And so I have gotten a, a ton more raider attacks. So since, hang, uh, hang on, since I, sorry, I did that. I just want to understand this: the less people you have in your vault, yeah, the more likely you are to be attacked by raiders. Correct. Which means the more likely you are to be attacked by a legendary raider. No, what? Wait, why? Why would you get rid of people? So, if you get your vault below sixty people. Then you do not. So the, the the alpha predator for attacking your vault are death claws. Okay, right. And so when you go over sixty, then you you kind of hit a different bracket of um, the randomized events roll. Mm-hmm. And so you are way more frequently to get death claw attacks than you are raider attacks. But the achievement is for successfully repelling fifty raider attacks. Oh, sorry. I thought this was the legendary one. No, well, no. So that is getting legendary dwellers, right? Okay, and that gotcha. is, so that is so. After I get the fifty of these, I'm. I think I got to break down and do the clock manipulation trick. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Um, and so that you know, be a concerted effort when that is taken care of, because I'll, I'll have these last two achievements here, and then it's manipulating the clock so that you can trick the game into thinking you're doing your consecutive days and then boom, lunchbox, 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 lunchbox. And every seven days you get a lunchbox and you just keep opening those up. Now, it looks like most people are getting their legendary dweller count. You need 20. I have eight. They're getting it about opening 400 to 500 lunchboxes. So again, if you were to buy those... Right, you know, not on sale. You get forty for twenty, so it's two bucks a lunch or fifty cents a lunch box. Forty lunch boxes for twenty dollars, fifty cents a lunch box. So you're talking two hundred and fifty bucks if you were trying to force the issue by just throwing money at it. Uh, I spent ten bucks because you know I, I've had fun with the game. I gave it a shot, boosted. I got like one dweller out of that whole thing. I was like, yikes. Um, I am at one hundred and twenty nine lunch boxes opened with eight legendary dwellers so oh here's another raider attack right now that's the beauty of it too you can just let this thing run and yeah if your guys die whatever i'll make them happy later <laughs> just put, just, i'll just you just put them in a bang room and uh they make a baby and both participants a bang room? happiness do you just call well, bedrooms bang rooms well, that's all it is. I mean, it's like a breeding chamber. Uh, you just you just put them in. They make a baby, and they're both at one hundred percent. And then when the baby grows up, you evict the baby. So my question <laughs> is, if you're starting out, so you're saying it's better to have under sixty dwellers. If I'm if I was to start Fallout Shelter tomorrow, is there any benefit to ever going above it? Should I always keep yes. below it? 
No, you wanna you wanna rock it to the top, and and fill up your dual, vault, go nuts, and then train. So as you get bigger, you can kind of self sustain things, and you get crafting materials. You get you get a bunch of things that make your life a a whole lot easier when you get to this end game stuff. And so like where I'm standing right now, because you, you do have to unlock all the rooms. There's an achievement for that. You do. There's plenty of things you have to do. Um, as you as you lead up to that point, but once you reach kind of the stasis, that's when you want to purge everybody and get down below that threshold. Because what you're doing then is you've got all your top level characters. You know, your your 25, 50, however many you want to keep, top tier characters. You know, level 50, the best guns, full maxed out stats because you can train them up. Um, once you get all those in place then they can operate your high efficiency rooms at uh, a much faster rate. So like right now, I only need one or two food rooms going because they can make both food and water, uh, these Nuka-Cola plants. And so I can just throw, you know, I, ha I can have six dwellers run those two things and feed my entire population easily. Like all my bars are maxed. The power rooms. I, I tend to be a little bit of hoarder, so I have a lot of storage rooms still because I can't, I just can't get rid of things. Like I have tons and tons of guns and things, um, so I, I end up having more power rooms and stuff. But again, they're they're operating at peak efficiency, so I am well overproducing what I need to keep this place alive. And so that's when you then when you back everything down and then just kind of let the game run in the background. And let raider attacks show up. And yeah, like I said, occasionally people die, whatever, just revive them, not a big deal. Uh, the main thing then is once that's done, it is clock manipulation time. Because trying to, you know, I've been trying to just farm out like through quests and stuff. But because I've finished all of the quests, I have to wait for the weekly. Uh, there's one daily quest. Sometimes there's bonus quests in there. But again, the likelihood of those having lunchboxes attached to them and then all the work to get those... It just takes so long to get just even one lunchbox that the the tail on this is 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 too hard or too lengthy without clock manipulation. I'm just man, I just I I want to play it, but on the other hand, I'm hearing your frustrations and I'm like, ugh. It's so casual though that like you really don't have to do anything to it. I mean, it's like it's like it's like Microsoft Solitaire, right? Where you know you have to show up maybe for five minutes three or four times a day just because you know as things turn over you play for five ten minutes and then you move on with your life and you know so, so no regrets is what you're telling me no i i like it i mean i like this kind of this it reminds me of like XCOM with the base stuff although it's a little bit more management than that but like i i like it i i enjoy the premise of the game and i've enjoyed what i've done so far but now it's like okay you know this it's it's a it's it's overstayed it's welcome it's yeah. time to mm -hmm. it's time to just close the shop here and the fastest way to do that is going to be goofing around with time and i know people have set up like and I, I don't know anything about this so i'll have to do some research on it or if any of our listeners want to send me some information on it where you can like get a like a program to move your mouse for you you know and you can be like you know so you can set up the keystrokes to okay do this change the date do this click here click here and you know, and just kind of lock in all the all the motions so that you can keep cycling through, checking every day, moving the clock, checking every day. You know, because every seven days you get the uh, you get the lunchbox. Um, so there's a lot of videos on TrueAchievements.com that will spell that out for you. But uh, yeah, so hopefully I get to finish this up this month. That will be nice. Do you have anything else? I do, and, uh, in fact. You want to talk about there's it. one thing that I've been playing almost it's, it's seemingly nonstop for the past week or so, I'd say. I, okay. I got the Walking Dead collection in. Ooh, that's a doozy. Yes, it is. I'm just shy, just shy of 50%, almost done with season two. Look, Freem, you've heard me talk about these games before. You know yep. I'm a Telltale defender. I'm a Telltale fan. I, I like the, the way they tell stories. I like the model that they have. It's, oh man, it's, it's just long in the tooth for me now. I just, I, I've done these so many times. It's amazing. The, I mean, on the one hand, it's okay because 
I'm sitting over here with two TVs on. I'm playing, playing in quotes, uh, Walking yeah. Dead Collection on my Xbox One, and I'm playing these you stupid you draw games on my Xbox 360. Which means every now and again, I'm looking over to see if I'm dead or if there's right. something else I need to do <laughs> on The Walking Dead, and uh, it it is what it is. It's I mean I'm not complaining because it's it's a game worth four thousand gamer score points and yeah. and a game i barely have to pay attention to you know but it's just i don't i, I think i'm done with the walking dead i don't want to play it again a, you know any of these ones i'm i am yeah. kind of excited actually for for season four but i don't right. want to play season one again i just the i finale. just don't i just don't want I, I don't want to play season two again i've only played season three twice which is seemingly a lot less than two and one and two but i still don't even want to play that anymore i just I, yeah i want to be done and i want the story to end and i'm excited for that which is actually coming up i think it's in two weeks yes uh um, yes but uh yeah so it's a monster of a collection four thousand points four thousand easy points but you're gonna be playing it for a while Right. And uh, I am comfortable just playing them the one time, getting my story and and moving on with my life. I don't I don't need the stack. Um, you know, maybe at some point if I have some shows to catch up on, I might do the dual screen thing. Watch a little TV while yeah. that's on in the background. Yep. That's a good thing. Um, because there's plenty of programming that I, I need to finish. And so, you know, that's that's on my list possibly to do there, but you know, I I didn't even I haven't finished. I still have like two chapters of Michonne left. Right, I just did the first one, and I have uh, I still have all of season three yet to do the New Frontier. Um, and so, you know, it, uh, obviously at some point I'll get to them. You know, I, I do enjoy the story. I you know they're they're fun, they're good, but you're right. It's it is. Yeah, I, I'm glad they're they're closing it out. I'm glad they're closing the whole thing out. Have you seen? The uh, what Telltale's Twitter is doing right now with the hashtag MyClem, their story builder. So tell me about this. All right. So Telltale, like, you know, the idea is that maybe you haven't seen the whole, you haven't played all the games, or you've played them so long ago that maybe you kind of forgot what had happened or maybe you maybe you were on 360 or whatever and now you're on the PlayStation and you lost your save game progress or something. Well, so they want to recap you on everything that's gone on and so they have this story builder, telltale.com slash story builder and it's a, it's, it's a, a video that plays through the story of The Walking Dead up until the finale here with, with Clem. And... And so you, it's an interactive story, and and it, it it's beautiful comic book type artistry. Uh, you know the characters are black and white, but they have splashes of color in there. I mean, it's like read it. It's like watching a visual comic book play out in front of you, and it'll bring up those moments that you know the the, the key moments from the games that you had played prior. So you know uh, the first one where you uh you have to make a decision between the two characters uh as lee in the pharmacy and you 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 if you remember who you picked you can click that one or you can just paint your own story and say well i didn't play that game so i'll just pick this guy whatever and they kind of fill in a little bit of what had happened and um they set a really cool backdrop to everything that's going on and then when this is done they'll tell you what type of person clem has become Based on the decisions that you made, how has that shaped her in, uh, you know, into into the future here? And it is super cool. Now I couldn't finish it because I haven't finished the whole series yet. Um, you know, so <laughs> I'm I'm curious how that ends. I saw some person, you know, tweeted their their finale, which was like um, resilient. I think was was her kind of character trait where she had uh, she seen some stuff. <laughs> uh, you know and so had to you know that's kind of what shapes her personality moving into the third game and so maybe that just provides you as a new player a framework with which to approach the character um as you play through the finale and how is she going to treat others around her and i mean that that is the beauty of that game is it really puts you in a lot of precarious scenarios where you're just like oh boy you know i, I 
this is I think what I would do. Is this what a nine year old girl would do? Is this a, like you're you're conflicted on a lot of those things, and typically they all kind of end bad. <laughs> yeah, well, certainly. Um, I mean, that's the that's the draw of those games. You know, it's basically how do you try to make the best of a terrible situation, and kind of boils down to the fact that you can't in in most situations. Uh, I don't think this is for new players. Oh, gosh. It wouldn't do you any good because you don't have any context. Like you said, the first choice that you're presented with was the first major choice in the first Walking Dead, which was choosing between saving two characters in a pharmacy. Um, we will try not to go to any spoilers beyond that, but it's that simple. But if you don't know yeah. who those two characters are, or even with the, this, the slightest idea of who these two characters are, it means nothing to you. It's literally... The, the screen could say A or B. What do you choose? Yeah. And so I, I do. I think this is more for, like you said, the people that have played in the past and are coming back or the people that may have lost their progress along the way or even people, honestly, who have played all through the whole way. But they just want to kind of cre- create and curate their own sort of experience with the game. Yeah, because the beauty is, is when you're done with this, you can actually import this data on your Telltale account into the new game yep. and so you know kenny will remember this and <laughs> you know whatever like those things can perpetuate uh into shape how your story is going to end up and so um so yeah ea did something For, very similar to this okay. with mass effect uh if you right. remember mass effect came out on the xbox 360 uh exclusively and the play and this was kind of the first game that really allowed this sort of not the first of all time, but like the the first major game that allowed you to kind of carry your progress th- of the story through all of the series. Well, when Mass Effect Two came out on PlayStation Two, the, three, sorry, they had to deal with that in some way. So they they kind of fabricated this way to choose your choices. You had to play through a comic and then pick your choices so you could get the backstory. And then right. in Mass Effect 3, they did the same thing, same thing on both systems where you, if you never played, the, if you didn't have a save file from the other games, you were allowed to sort of curate the character. I mean, it's, it is role playing, essentially. And yeah. it's really cool for these types of games because the story, I mean, Telltale games are only about story. That's it. And right. Yeah, there's nothing there. It, it, yeah, it, so it, you know, if you're not invested in the story, you're it's going to be a horribly confusing experience for you. If you <laughs> if you don't know what right. the hell's going on, or why is this person mad at me, or how how is she dead, or whatever, you're the, the don't play a Telltale game. You know what I mean? Like this is just not good for you. So it's it behooves them to kind of come up with this sort of creative solution. But I, but this is brilliant. This this absolutely works, and I think this is for the. Pe- I think most people have kind of forgotten about Clem for for yeah. a good chunk of time, and this serves to remind them of what she's gone through, and also th- so that they can shape how they go into the final season. So this is a really cool, kind of neat feature that Telltale is doing here. I like it, and I think the presentation is really cool too. Yeah. So. You know, that that cool comic book style. Um, yeah, fantastic. I just did my last five room rushes there in like the last five oh, minutes. Nice. And boom. Two more achievement. left. Two more, two more down, right? Yep. Got and I uh, had another raid, ra- raider attack while we were talking. This is great. I love it. <laughs> it's like just, it's just working, working itself. I might actually do it. Well, I won't do it this weekend. I got stuff going on. But uh, you were talking about uh, acting as a role playing game. I saw something on Amazon. I guess this can technically be a zombie news item. Um, but uh, so there's a there's. Do you do you do did you ever do any D and D or any like role playing? I think I think we talked about this in the past, not, but I, I can't remember. Not D and D, but I've played some D and D based games very 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 lightly, very loosely. Yeah. yeah. So I never had, I, you know, for me, it was hard. I, when I was a kid, it just, it didn't, I wasn't as creative. I certainly wasn't as confident and I like, I just didn't get it. I really enjoyed rolling up characters 
Uh, I think I had a buddy who tried to get me doing the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles role playing game. Oh man, I didn't like, even know that existed. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> oh, man, like you exciting. you would you would take your you know your percentile dice and and roll up what kind of animal you were, and then you got to decide <laughs> how okay. mutated you were. <laughs> and so he's like, "All right, I made a character of you. You uh, you were a hamster, <laughs> and you are you you are still. I mean, you're not. You're an animal based mutant. So you." You carry all of the features of a large man-sized. Hamster. So you're more hamster than man, basically. Yes, you don't. You don't look like. And and so you've got a and you've got a trench coat on and a in like a fedora, right? Like you. That's that's what you look like right now. Is trying to hide uh, <laughs> in, in the shadows as this grotesque, monstrous hamster. And I was like, well, that whatever. And so he tried to walk me through it, and I just I didn't get it at the time. Of like, okay, you're in a convenience store. What do you want to do? And I'm like, I don't know. Get uh, get an icy. Like it just didn't. It didn't. I didn't understand what I was supposed to do. <laughs> <laughs> and so now, that's funny. It, like, like it makes sense. So you to were me. like just doing completely mundane sort of. <laughs> right, right. Like I like he's like there's uh you know there's there's blood tracks leading outside the front door, and and like he, he kept it vague. I mean, it wasn't a, we were what? Gosh, was I in like sixth grade maybe? fifth grade i mean i was so young that it was like I, I didn't even possess deep cognitive thought at that time of like <laughs> oh i should investigate this or i you know i should see if there's any survivors in the room or you know whatever like it just was so beyond me and so that was like my window and i just i I'd never got into it and now with the popularity of like you know the uh, Harmon quest where you can watch you know some role-playing games uh, animated or even the podcast of Harmontown, they'll they'll do uh, you know a a game of D anD D for the last fifteen minutes of the show. There's other podcasts dedicated to just listening to you know creative dungeon masters run people through quests. There's some serious, there's some funny, there's some whatever. And so like I've I've started to grow in interest in this area. And my my uh, niece is husband. So my nephew-in-law, I guess. Anyway, they just got married a little bit ago. But he was like talking up how he wants to get a regular uh, role-playing. Does that make you feel old? Kind of. Okay, I was just curious. It, it, it does. They're having their first baby here in like a few months. Oh my months. goodness! That means you're going to be a grand, great uncle, great, great sec no. sec. Wait, what are you going to be? I don't know. I don't know how that works. A great anyway. second, a great second uncle. What? What? That is weird. <laughs> um, I mean, it'll be fun. It'll be fun to get a new, uh, you know, baby in here. But yeah, I mean, he's in his mid twenties, you know. So he's not. He's not that. What? A, anyway, you're old. That's that's yeah. The point. I'm old. Yeah. I'm old. Yeah, uh, you know. But I have plenty of like board games and stuff that I like to play with my group. And now, but now it's like, oh, if this is with like family members, then maybe I would be able to do it more often. So, like, yeah, well, you know, maybe we could get something going. Anyway, uh, so I brought this idea up to him, back to my zombie news here, and it's called, uh, there's there's a, a, a series of books called The End of the World. And it is, and so there there's four different books. There's, like, The End of the World, Zombie Apocalypse, End of the World, uh, Rise of the Robots, End of the World, uh, Alien Invasion, and End of the World... I think it's like a Cthulhu type elder horror type thing. Anyway, and the the pre the premise is it is a role playing game, but you create a character based on yourself. So you are playing yourself, and and you so like you would look at it and say, okay, what do you think your strength would be? And so you know, on a, a scale of like one to five or one to ten or whatever, I don't I don't remember what the scale is, but you would you would pick your attributes like okay you know i kickbox i'm strong i'm not super strong but i'm pretty strong so let's you know let's say it's a 10 point scale i'd say i'm probably you know a maybe a seven or an eight right now athleticism's probably up there i'm pretty smart charismatic sure you know and like you you kind of gauge yourself you can't give yourself it, 10 in all attributes for you well so here here's the thing so then you give it to your buddies <laughs> and okay. they'll go through and grade you. <laughs> and if you nailed your stat, you get a bonus. And if you missed it, they 
penalize you significantly oh. for like over inflating your own wellness. That's fun. That's cool. They'll I like give that. You like a, yeah, they'll give you like a debilitating thing to kind of like counteract it. Like, oh, he's egocentric, yeah. and so like that, and then it has negative consequences to it and stuff. Right. And like, and so you create this character, and so they put in some balances and stuff like that. And then uh, there are there are campaigns in that book. And you, I think there's like six events, but they can all play out differently because really it's it's kind of, there are events and there's a starting, like how did the plague, you know, in the zombie one, how did the plague start? Is it a, a dormant virus? Is it been rampant for a while? Is it uh, medical? Is it an alien thing? You know, whatever. And then they pretty much say, okay, you're, uh, it's, it's today. You're trapped in your basement. Um, you know, so you, you know, you look outside, it's dark, you have, the power grid has been down, uh, and so you are running out of fresh water. What would you like to do? And then, so you, you look at your neighborhood and you're like, okay, well, you know, we got that, the convenience store down the street. I don't, you know, it's pretty fresh. I don't think it's been raided yet. Maybe we can go down there, but if we leave now, you know, we, we, we haven't really done a lot of time to barricade. So do you want to spend the time to barricade and make some noise or, you know, and you can play out the scenario, and then they'll, you know, they'll give you the the tools with which to conduct combat and do that kind of stuff. And that has piqued my interest so significantly uh, that I, I I would really like it'd be cool to have a group uh, to to do something like that. Even though that you know, again, no achievements, no video games, but um, you know, th- that type of thought uh, experiment is so fascinating to me. And uh, anyway, does it do anything for you? Is, is that uh, up your alley at all, or are you are you not uh, not much into role playing because you have too many video games to play? It's actually really funny because on the other show that I I do on in podcasting it was on it's on Star Trek. We frequently I wouldn't say frequently, but uh, occasionally uh, we have these episodes where we do a little bit of, of role playing fun, and that's where a lot of my role playing experience comes from. And it's it's sure it's a it's great. It's fun. It's what a cool time to you know. Find some friends to just basically make up your own adventure. Right. Um, it's not. Well, and I like the idea that, like, you know, I mean, maybe it may, maybe it's different if you're in high school and you still have to, you know, quote unquote, be cool and all that kind of stuff. But like now that I'm an adult and I'm married with a couple of kids, it's like I can I can do whatever I want. <laughs> like, who am I impressing anymore? Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, what's going to be fun having a you know this fun thought experiment where uh, you know my house is being attacked by zombies that sounds awesome to me and you know what i don't even care i'm gonna announce it on a podcast that i'm doing it because it sounds cool yeah you i mean you need a good you need a good group yeah, you need the DM you need key. a good dm and like if if they're all your friends you're you're gonna have a good time no matter what happens even if, yeah. if you know what it's just it's just a really cool laid back way to well, I don't know if it's laid back is the right adjective but uh, a really cool fun way to experience a, a night an evening with your friends and I, I right. it, it, as long as you don't take it too seriously and nobody gets you know they butt hurt yeah exactly it, just have fun with it and you're well, you'll have a really good night I mean that's why I like like so many of those new board games that are set up as uh you know cooperative experiences you against the board you against the systems um you know those are so much fun where you can you know yeah you're working together with a group and it's it's required that you work together there's a reason you and your friends are you know that there's still fun games that are competitive that's great you know we've played a bunch of those as well but um, you know, having cooperative games and just the, the plethora of game design, um, you know, and how it's evolved from garbage like Monopoly. Like it's, yeah, I said it garbage like Monopoly. That's a <laughs> terrible game. You don't want to fight with your family for you. That's really all. And it's so <laughs> like, it's really only fun for the first 30 minutes when you're buying up properties. And, and even that you, I, I don't know anyone who plays by the auction rules, like I don't think anybody. Does I, I don't that. think anybody plays by any rules. I think that like if you go group to group, you're never gonna find just a completely standardized set of rules for not for Monopoly. Every time I played Monopoly with a new person, we've had to adjust the rules. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. You have to, like, lay out the groundwork <laughs> and say, okay, this is how we're playing today. And then by that point, too, I don't think I've ever finished a game. Yeah, that's the like, thing. Like, legitimately finished a game. <laughs> yeah. It's always been like, okay, well, I see how this plays out. Like, you know, it, it as time goes to infinity, you run out of money. <laughs> exactly. Like, like, that's just how it is. Yeah. So, you know, it's just, that's terrible game design. Um, anyway, we should, oh, there's another thing. Okay. I got a question for you here. This is uh, this was very interesting. On it was it, it was uh, posed by I think Game Informer did the article, and and th- this is always so. You're familiar with the Nintendo Entertainment System, right? The very first Nintendo. Uh, they just did the classic, all that kind of thing. Uh, it's typically written as a three letter acronym. Um, and of course, there was the Super Nintendo, and and, and so if you looked at the three letter acronym, uh, how would you how would you say that? What would you say you were going to go back and play? Because there's two different ways typically you would do it, I, and I'm, I'm, I think I know where you're going to go, and I think it's the opposite of me. I well, you maybe you I may disappoint you, Fram, because I go either way. I go both ways. Oh, really? In fact, uh, you're, you, you go both ways. I go both ways. Uh, it would either. Do you have a preference? I don't honestly. I would. I guess I. I don't. I. I guess if you if you just said what is this and you pointed to like a card with it on it, I would probably say a Nintendo Entertainment System. But you'd say the full on thing. I. I would probably just say Nintendo. Yeah. Uh, but I have no. So I very specifically say NES, like. If 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 I see it in the prison, I'm like, that's the NES, and I used to play on it, and there's the Super NES. There is a group of people who call it the NES mm-hmm. or the SNES. Yep. I hate those people. <laughs> uh, no, that's not true. I don't hate those people, but I do hate that that phrase. I think I think that's wrong. I think it's objectively wrong. Uh well, maybe not objectively wrong anymore. You see. There's a new game coming out for the 3DS called WarioWare's Greatest Hits. Uh, you're familiar with Wario, the goofy, uh-huh. biker-loving, <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. quote-unquote arch-nemesis of Mario. I don't think he's an arch-nemesis, really. I'm, he's just kind of a doofus. I mean, he is the anti-Mario. That's why his, Yeah. I mean, that's why his M is a W. Letters upside down. Yeah. 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 So, WarioWare, and... Uh, and on their Twitter account, they went ahead and said it's pronounced Ness. The official Famicom guy, the, the, the Twitter spokesperson, said Nintendo themselves says it's Ness, pronounced Ness. Now, it's funny because this article goes into more depth about saying, well, there's two, the two mains of thoughts. You had the NES. Uh, where you you know you'd say NES or Ness referring to Earthbound right yeah, that character certainly. they call him Ness because of Ness uh, and so it says for their part this is a quote from the article Nintendo is consistently inconsistent while press <laughs> releases tend to refer to it as and this is in the written word an NES right a n n e s which implies a pronunciation of the letters by sounding out the e h n n sound right because you you modify if you have a vowel starting so they have occasionally referred to it as a NES or a super NES, as well as the snes and commercials for nintendo often say nes and now there's new fuel to the fire with this stupid wario thing where they <laughs> did, went ahead and twitter and said it is NES. but why can't they just t- like uh, it just drives me nuts. here's the thing frame we all know the one guy Right. That guy who tries to correct everybody for all of their grammatical mistakes and sure. uh, syntactical errors and all of these things. Right. We all know that there is one guy like one, you know, one. There's probably more than one. But no, yeah, in we, your group, we, we in your, specifically in your know group, one. Yeah. in any given group, one, maybe he's a, like a big guy, one big guy. Yeah. Huge pedant, pedantic guy right. who every time. See, I. I understand it. I do because when I was 
a lot younger, I pretended to kind of care about that sort of stuff. This, sure. this is this is descriptivism versus prescriptivism, which is how words should be used versus how words just actually are used. Right. And uh, who? I mean, so like we have this big argument with GIF versus GIF, right? Sure. Uh, where do you fall on that? GIF. GIF. Why do you fall on GIF? Is it because it's because it's graphics interchange format, right? Probably. Yes. But but you you do know that. Are you aware that the person who invented the acronym says it's GIF? Says GIF. Yeah. So like like the word giraffe. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So here now, if Nintendo is this this is also one of those situations where you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. Nintendo is obviously inconsistent with it. If they came out one way or the other, they'd get jumped on because they've been inconsistent. There's no, you can blah, 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 blah. It, sure. Who cares, man? Like what the, like, <laughs> like, is it NES or SNES? Who, who, if I say NES and you know what I'm talking about, I'm just, I, that's where I land. Well, then words have done their job and I yeah. think we can both move on and, uh, we're good to go. So that's, uh, that's where I am on that whole thing. I don't know. It's just, it's such a weird thing to, to, cause you frustration you know yeah yeah i mean that let's let's say i'm not losing sleep over it but it very clearly to me is n-e-s um and i will i will just rest at (laughs) hey you know what i did today tell me i bought another game um i was compelled by the announcement uh I, I, I we've talked about it before and i've been following their discord brawl out oh Remember that one yeah. yeah yeah the smash brothers game um is is coming you know it was announced for playstation 4 just because they were still working on certification well now it's a it, it, it has been official uh they are launching the game on august 21st uh, on the xbox one and with their launch announcement trailer, uh, you know, so last, I think it was last week, two weeks ago, they said that a, so th- they have some crossover characters. Um, uh, the ones that have, have been in the game that are on the Switch, and I've played the Switch on my son's version, uh, are Hyperlight Drifter, called Drifter, and Juan from Guacamele. Um, those two characters are in the game already, and they're fun, they're cool. And they have just announced last week that ukulele <laughs> was going to be a playable character. I saw that, yeah. Yeah. And and uh, when it comes out this fall, the hero from Dead Cells is going to be in it. This, uh, you know, And I don't think he has a name. My son was confused about how that worked. The Dead Cells hero, he, uh, you know, he, he is kind of a, a knight. He kind of looks like mixed between a, like a, a gaunt-looking shovel knight uh, but his head is a, um, a a ball of flame, a a black ball of flame, this kind of alchemist fire type thing. And uh, I saw that and I was like, "Well, that's it." You know, I this I a love this game and b I need to own it now. So when it comes out, I got it. It's uh, I pre ordered it. I'm excited. It should be uh, should be tons of fun. Um, I can't wait. I love you know. This, the the Smash Brothers style, and I, I yeah I'm looking forward to looking forward to playing it. Yeah, well, Freem, maybe there will be some uh, some multiplayer achievements that we can boost because I'm definitely looking forward to it as well. Um, yeah, I watched the trailer like a few weeks ago, just mm-hmm. randomly. I don't know. I'm, I'm sure it came up in my news feed for some reason, but it was it was the first time that I knew that like Juan was going to be there. I'm like, oh, hey, I know that guy. It's yeah. it's cute. Like it's cute that they're doing like they're doing indie crossovers. I like that. That's awesome. Right. That's super awesome. So uh yeah, I'm I'm excited for it for day one. I'm I'll definitely be playing it. So Yeah. It, I'm excited I'm excited. I wish there was like uh one of the you know, where they sometimes have those discounts for new you know, like, oh you buy it buy it on launch and it's uh, you know, twenty percent off or whatever. Not the case, unfortunately. It is uh, it is twenty bucks, um, but twenty bucks for a Smash Brothers fighting game, like I love that type of game. And it's got online online play, so you can you know you don't have to you know you don't have to do like local only. Um, so yeah, I'm sure there will be you know plenty to boost. I haven't seen 
Because again, I've played it on the Switch, so of course the Switch doesn't have you know achievements to it. So it's like I, I don't know what the achievement list is going to look like. Um, nor have they announced it just yet, but we'll find out. I'm super pumped. We'll find out soon enough, and uh, mm-hmm. and maybe it'll tide me over until December when we get real, actual Smash Brothers. So, yes, yes, that is uh, that is right around the corner as well. Um, anything else you want to talk about? How does your uh, random to do list look this month? Oh, hey, good question. I I've done two so far, so it's oh yeah. Actually, there's two things we should talk about. One is random to do list. Um, I've done two achievements in my random to do list. I did, um, oh my goodness. Oh, one of them happened to be in Walking Dead collection. So, oh yeah, that just nice. happened to be something I was going to get anyways. Uh, I worked on Bla- uh, Battle Block Theater tonight. Uh, there was an ach- that game's fun, uh, man. I love the Behemoth. I don't know what they've been up to. Um, maybe they've been up pit people. Oh, Pit People. That's right. That's the game I haven't played. But even Pit People, was, it feels like two or three years ago. They must be doing yeah, something it, else. It was, it was totally this this like January. <laughs> was it? No, it was not that recent. I, I there is no recent. way. There is no way. Um, it's time to look it up. I want what I want. Oh, my God. There's a stack for Windows 10. I didn't even know. Um, for, for Pit People? Yeah. It came out in March of 2000. Oh, you're right. March of 2018. That's when, it, and that. So to be fair, that's when it left. Beta. Oh, the beta. That's right. The beta was out for a open while. for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, twenty January of twenty seventeen. Yeah, okay. That makes so it, yeah. that makes sense. Okay. Um. Anyways, pit people. Yeah. In, but whatever. I love the behemoth, so it was cool to play one of their games, even if it was just for a grindy achievement. Um. I'll be going for a good chunk of mine. I think a lot of them are definitely doable. Mm-hmm. So I'm excited to to do it. Have you done any of yours yet? I haven't done any yet. You know, my my list is it's pretty doable, but there, there's some long in the tooth ones. So I've been kind of hovering around that ten achievements per month thing, um, which is okay. But like my my like one offs, there's only you know three that I can get like real quick, and. And then, then you know, I guess I have what nine, eight, eight, maybe here that are like, you know, you got to kind of complete the game to get yeah. there. Mm-hmm. And but it's only maybe eight to ten. Like I've boss, I have two from boss one hundred one. Get every upgrade and and beat level thirty one. And so it's like, okay, well, if I do that, I might as well just complete the game. So ten hours, eight hours, or whatever that's left. Like, um, you know. Maybe something like that, or Among the Sleep. Complete Among the Sleep. Okay, so I have to complete a game, but that game is one to two hours long. So that's, you know, not not too hard. I do have a Little Nightmares one on there. Ah. So I'm excited for that. That is the game of the month. Yeah, the for, second uh, thing we August needed here. to talk about. Yep. So I do have a Little Nightmares on there, so I'm going to hopefully get that one. Um, again, not probably not getting the completion this month, but, you know, I'll give it, I'll give it a shot. Have you played it at uh, all? I haven't started it yet. Okay, no, kind of. That's that's gonna be one of my like weekend things, you know, where I have like a Saturday where that I can just really get you know two three hours deep into it, maybe four hours deep, um, you know, because I really want to sink my teeth into it um, in one good go. And so I can't really do that during the week. It's you know that's why Owl Boy's been kind of nice because it's like oh I'll just search this area for whatever or boss one hundred one. Hey, I got time for you know two or three bosses here. Um, you know, I can kind of just pick up and, and do those pretty quick. But I look at this list and it's like, okay, well, I have seven games that I should just sit down and complete. Uh, okay, but there's only, you know, four weeks in August <laughs> and I'm out of town for two of them. So it's like, well, crap. I don't know when that's going to happen. But uh, yeah, that's, I, you know, my list is fine. It's okay. Um, I did have a couple games on here that I forgot to take off my list that technically I had from Terrigan. Uh, so, like, it's either, like, if I want to buy them again. One is Sonic the Fighters. And it's like, oh, God, do I really want to spend five bucks to get the last do it. four achievements Oh, wait, no, no, why didn't you finish it when you had it? Because I just got the, because I was like, oh, I'll just milk this for whenever I need, oh, like, geez. an S or whatever. And so I was just like, I just played the first four levels, and I was like, oh, I'll just stop here and... 
you know, because I can just load it up, whatever. And it's like, well, now it was taken away from me. When a so, game is an hour or less, just finish it. Just finish it. Just and I, and I mean, I, I have that mindset now, like Vanishing of Ethan Carter. That's, you know, I have, I have an achievement in there to get. It's pretty short, but it's like, okay, one to two hour completion, just do it. Yep. There's no reason to leave that hanging. The likelihood of getting those one or two last achievements on your random to-do list that you're saving, pretty darn slim. Yep. Just finish the thing. So that's kind of my mindset now, and uh, and and ultimately I will do that. Uh, so I don't I don't know what I'm going to do tonight now that when we when we finish recording here. I, I got some options. I should pick one of these games to to go into. Um, you know what? I maybe I'll, maybe I'll put the the finishing touches on Owlboy tonight. Do it. Get it done. Get that thing wrapped up. Cool. Uh, well, I think that'll do it for me. Anything else that you wanna you wanna touch on? We we talked about little nightmares. We talked about um, random to do lists. No, I I think I that's it for think me. There's anything left? I think we're good. Yeah. Delightful. And uh, so I want to thank everybody for listening. I, I hope you enjoyed it. It was fun. It's great to be uh, talking again on a regular basis. Although I think I'm out next week, so I don't know what you're going to do, but I'll have to come up with we'll, something. We'll figure something out. Yeah. Um, it, and a thank you for all of you who who remained uh, patrons of the show. Um, thank you. That you know, I just saw that process through. I'm a patron, so I saw I got billed, uh, which is great. We're back on track. Which you know, we're we're paying things out. Um, so great. Thank you again. Um, ratings, reviews help a ton. Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, wherever you listen, that would be fantastic. Uh, and and come hang out with us on Discord, discord.io slash zz, or uh, just reach out to us, contact at zz.com or Twitter. That's at zz, z e d t o z e d. So uh, thank everybody for helping out, keeping the show running, doing all the fun stuff we got. We're 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 back on track. And so on behalf of Prue. I have been Brandon, and to all of you Achievement Hunters and Gamerscore Junkies out there, thank you so much for listening. I will catch you next episode. See you later.